Folks, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, looking forward to this conversation with uh, my friend Andrew Claven, award-winning author, screenwriter, and media commentator uh, over at uh, PJ Media. And, and um, let's uh, say hello to Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Steve. How you doing? Good. Glad, good to talk to you. Last time uh, we, we bumped into each other was down at Restoration Weekend in uh, beautiful uh, uh, Palm Beach, Florida. That was great. I remember. It had been a while since I'd seen you. Yeah, it had been a while, and uh, you were up at the studio at WOR a couple of times, and we had talked a couple of times. But uh, uh, So we got, we got too bad there's nothing to talk about, so I'll see you later. <laughs> I know. It's a slow time. Oh, my you? goodness. All right, let, let, let's start with the uh, – and we're going to talk a little bit later in the show with um, our friend Bill Donahue of the Catholic League about, uh, about various issues, but including, of course, the Pope being named Time Magazine uh, – uh, man of the year. Uh, do you think that Time Magazine did this, uh, or, or maybe I rephrase it, would they have done this if the Pope hadn't made uh, his latest comments about uh, about uh, capitalism and uh, and economics? Well, it's hard hard to say, but I'm sure it helped. Uh, you know, it, it's funny because it's it's early for this Pope yet. I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, condemn him too quickly. He is uh, putting forward, you know, Catholic doctrine is not economic doctrine it's not uh, it's not necessarily uh, political uh, I, I thought as a, as a friend uh, of Catholics and a guy who loved the last two popes I thought the last two popes were brilliant I thought uh, John Paul was a the second was a hero and uh, Benedict the 16th was a genius he was one of the really great thinkers of the age uh, so I'm friendly uh, to Catholics and, and popes I, I think that he spoke unwisely you know I think that the the Pope when he's when he I mean, capitalism has just been shown again and again. It has to be regulated, and it has to have charity and compassion and all that stuff. But when it is, it has been shown again and again to bring more people out of poverty than any other uh, system we've developed. And so as the caretaker of the poor, as the pope is, uh, I just thought it was unwise to diss it like that. You know, I mean, criticize it, sure. Uh, remind us that we can't be consumerist. Remind us that we have to be compassionate. Absolutely. But just it just sounded like he was coming down on the whole system. Yeah, it did. And it gave, it gave the left a lot of a lot of uh, fodder. Um, but but I you know I I think this pope has been. Uh, I, I was an admirer of the other, the previous two popes as well, but I think this pope has been something that we've we've never seen, uh, and, and some of the pictures and and some of the things he's done and not done in breaking with tradition and taking on uh, uh, forces inside the Vatican. Uh, I, I've given him much much praise for almost from day one uh, when he was selected. Having said that, I, I think you know, and and I'm sure the pope knows this, but I think you're right. He was talking about Catholic doctrine, uh, moreover, but I think the Pope would find, and he probably knows, that um, it, it, you're right. No, no system like capitalism gets people out of poverty. The other alternatives put people, put the masses into a poverty system, keep them in that poverty system, uh, and, and, and keep them uh, you know, under the thumb of, uh, of repressive regimes, usually. And in addition, in our own country, um, you know, th those who do the best uh, as we've seen, contribute the most, uh, right. aside from government programs, contribute the most out of their own pocket to help the needy. You know, it's true. And one of the things that has really distorted the thinking of the age is the socialism of, uh, of Europe, of Central Europe, uh, the, the health care of Britain, the, uh, the socialism of France. And what people don't understand is all of that, every single bit of it, was paid for by American capitalism. They could not have defended themselves against Soviet expansion without our military. Uh, they would have been absolutely destroyed uh, without, our, um, without our medical research and development, which was paid for by capitalism capitalism and paid for by those nasty profits that medical companies made. All of those advances, so many of those advances, advances came from the, uh, the Americans because we were paying full price for our medical care. And so if you don't have Americans taking care of uh, you know, the military business, if you don't have Americans taking care of research and development, all of that uh, European socialism goes away. And I think that that has distorted the view of even the last uh, pope, uh, you know, causing them to think that, oh, yes, this is the civilized way, this European socialism. But it's just not true. It's an illusion uh, paid for by American capitalism. Yeah, we're talking to Andrew Clavin, uh, award-winning author, screenwriter, media commentator. Uh, you uh, could read him all over me uh, PJ Media um, and uh, his, his book. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Nightmare uh, City in, in a second, but let's talk about the, uh, the previous Time Magazine Person of the Year winner, I believe was Barack Obama. Um, and there he was... Uh, yesterday at the uh, memorial service for 
um, Nelson Mandela, not only in his speech, I didn't bother to count, uh, but the sections of the speech that I did hear, if you started to count, I think I got 13 I's or me's or my's in, you know, in a 60-second 60, 60 soundbite. Um, so it was all about him. The media here made this, the whole trip and the whole service all about him. And uh, then afterward, uh, he shakes the hand of, uh, of Raul Castro and then goes back upstairs or wherever to where, where the dignitaries are sitting, and he clowns it up and starts taking uh, selfie pictures. Uh, I mean, could you imagine? If George W. Bush had done yeah. that at Nelson Mandela's uh, De- Della's service, they, there would be literally no other news today, no matter what would have happened. That would have been it. Yeah, no question. There's just no question about it. I mean, you know, when I saw him taking that selfie, my first thought was, you know, President Selfie is taking an Obama. You know? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it just defines his presidency. Do you remember, do you remember when uh, President Bush put his hands uh, in a kind of clumsy way on Angela Merkel, uh, the German chancellor? Yes, yes. The press went wild. Yes. So Obama flirting with the Danish PM, who is admittedly very hot, and Mrs. Obama is sitting there with this look like she's about to take out a rolling pin and hammer him. <laughs> and the press is like covering up for him and making excuses. Even the photographer who took the picture there. of them taking the picture felt it, it, the need to go. And, and now he's on all the shows on CNN and MSNBC. Oh, no, no, no. She was uh, Michelle Obama was very engaged. She was having a good time. She approved of the picture. She you just they just caught her at a, at a very slow moment there or uh, a, a reflective <laughs> moment. Give me a break. Yeah. They caught her in a bad moment in about 15 consecutive pictures. Yes, was- yes, because as it turns out, there are there are many of them. Absolutely. The look on her face was just priceless. And I mean, I, it, it's a terrible thing to say, but between uh, our president's buffoonish behavior and that zealot guy who was imitating a guy doing sign language for the deaf, I thought the comedy level at the uh, at the funeral of this very great man uh, was very high. It was yeah, kind of, it, it, kind of it, it absolutely was, and it, it's 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 a shame. All right, let, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the culture and and the the Hollywood culture and something that you know you deal with, and we have my friend Robert Davi on the show uh, quite often, and he deals with it. But t- talk talk. About about um, you know the, the culture shift that that you say, and you and I have talked about this before, and but that was a several years ago. So where are we now? Is that culture shift from far left continued? Is it is it motivated by the fact that uh, you know a lot of these leftist lunatic movies aren't doing anything, and 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 some of these uh, you know more wholesome uh, films are doing well? Talk about it. Well, I think that that is, you know, a, a cynical point of view, but also there's truth to it. Of course, uh, you know, Hollywood is a business. Uh, they're going to go where the money is. But I think there's something deeper going on. I mean, I read a lot of books by, uh, you know, academics and things like this who, who are thinking about this and people a lot of them a lot of secular academics a lot of people who do not believe uh, in God are suddenly questioning themselves and saying you know what happened where did the belief in truth go uh, where did the great conversation of Western literature how did that fall apart uh, how do we have our academies taken over by these clowns and knuckleheads who really don't know anything uh, like at, at UCLA where they just canceled uh, the reading of Shakespeare in English classes uh, but but impose gender theory, uh, you know, which is right. just uh, teaching people to be ignorant, teaching people to be stupid, teaching people to be unable to think about the various points of view in the world. So a lot of people at the very highest levels are questioning uh, this mistake that we've made. And when that happens, that trickles down. You know, there's a trickle down to ideas, not just to economics. Uh, and it, they come down and the, those people who are thinking uh, teach people and those people who are taught become artists and enter the culture. Uh, what, here's a, uh, just a really interesting phenomenon that to me the other day. I watched the film Gravity. And I don't want to give anything away if you haven't seen it. It's just a very fun adventure film with spectacular uh, special effects and excellent acting, George Clooney and Sandra Bullock. The movie is about God. There's, that's not me. That's not my interpretation. It's in the dialogue. If you take the dialogue out, the movie is about finding God in the universe, in this great, vast emptiness of space. I put up a blog post to that effect. And again, I didn't want to put in any spoilers, so I couldn't prove my case. But it's right there, Steve. It's right there in the movie, in the dialogue. The, all the comments, I got so many comments saying, no, it's not. It has nothing to do with this subject. It's not there. Uh, it's not there at all. 
Well, that kind of willful blindness has been going on for a long time, and I think it's starting to crack. And I think just the fact that a movie with George Clooney, a reliable liberal voice, uh, and Sandra Bullock, who is not as reliably liberal, uh, that did such fantastic box office and is so cutting edge technically, was telling a very simple story of reclamation uh, and salvation is changing, is, is, is a sign of the change that's trickling down. And up till now, I've just been talking about religion, but my point about religion is that it makes a big difference when you start to think about people uh, as, as creations of God. You have to start thinking about them differently, and certain subjects come up, like the question of liberty, the question of individual choice, the question of the dignity and freedom of people to do what they want with their own money, with their own property. All those questions become more possible uh, when you live in a more religious nation, as our founders told us. And so I think there is this shift going on, not just religiously, but politically. Uh, and on top of all that, there's Obamacare, which is just a tremendous well, mess. Well, yes, the, yes. The end of leftism as we know it. And, and, and you were kind enough to, uh, to, to uh, mention uh, the uh, interview I did with Mark Halpern in one of your uh, postings, one of your blogs, or your, your pieces uh, at PJ Media. And, um, uh, you know, when Mark Halpern admits that there are death panels and, and then goes on to make the argument for them, Although he never said the words death panels, I did, and he said yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that's very, very telling. And then, you know, he goes on MSNBC and the whole liberal panel, they start weighing in as to, yeah, why they need this. Uh, we need to bring down costs and end-of-life care, and we need to have this conversation, and we need to change the way we do things. It's all very, very scary. You know, the left has two modes. Their first mode is, don't be silly, that'll never happen. Right. And their second mode is, get over it, it's already over. Right. You know, it happened. already happened, right. Thing. Uh, you know, I mean, you have the New York Times writing stories about how the family uh, is, you know, r a ridiculous thing now that leftist policies have destroyed uh, the black family. The New York Times is here to tell us that the family was overrated to begin with. Right, you know, it's this, all over. This yeah. is typical, typical leftism. Uh, Obama himself is a past master of it. It's not going to happen. Oh, it's already here. Uh, and, and yeah, with death panels, that's, Steve, that is typical. I mean, I wrote about that years ago in the Wall Street Journal, how they were coming, and I got the same reaction as I got when I wrote about gravity. No, they're not. It's not happening. You're seeing, you're, you're just blind, you know. Well, they could deny it all they want, but, uh, you know, if the American people had any idea what was coming, not only the hundred million of us who are going to lose our policies after next year, possibly, but uh, the whole philosophical change uh, away from our Judeo-Christian ethic when it comes to taking care of our parents and the elderly and the sick, and now saying, well, you know, can't afford them, bye, uh, they're, they're, they're going to be stunned. It's it's you know it's, you know Obama is really good at the at boiling the frog slowly you know they say yeah, if you yeah. boil the frog slowly it doesn't jump out of the pan and he keeps doing these things where he says don't worry we're going to have Obamacare but it's not going to kick in until after the election well how stupid are people that they buy into that you know and he's doing it now again and don't worry I'm putting it off for a year you know as if that'll never come yeah so he's, well he's, unfortunately he's, it, it it's stupid. coming uh, yeah. Andrew great to talk to you we'll do it again soon thank you very much my friend. Thanks a lot, Steve. Take care. My pleasure. Andrew Clavin, uh, read him at uh, PJ Media and uh, award-winning author, screenwriter, and uh, commentator, of course. Okay, uh, folks, so we're going to have, I think, I think, I think, I think, an open segment when we come back. So we got some great sound bites for you and uh, one of my rants coming up. Then uh, Charlie Hurt. All ahead on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio. The Steve